Hi, everyone. Welcome to the program tonight. We still, still have a few guests filtering in, but we're after 6.30, so we are going to get started. Welcome to this evening's program, Rock Your Profile, Tips from LinkedIn. My name is Stephanie Navrat. I work in the Office of Alumni Engagement at Bates, and we're thrilled to have Eric and Hannah here to help you all put your best digital face forward on LinkedIn. Tonight's program is part of a new series of professional development events for alumni. Our office aims to offer programming and resources to support alumni in their professional lives in all stages of their careers. And tonight we have um, alumni from a range of classes online. We have everyone from class of 1976 to 2020, and even a few uh, seniors and juniors might join us uh, who are here getting a jump start on their professional lives. It's really nice to see so many familiar faces. So at this point, we're likely all familiar with Zoom, but I just wanted to give a quick reminder that this program is being recorded. So please remain on mute while our speakers have the floor. And just a reminder for you, if you ask a question, that will be recorded as well. Our speakers will have a, a chat and a few slides for about 30 minutes, and then we'll turn over to you, the audience, for questions. So now I'm happy to introduce our speakers and then we'll get started. Our featured speaker tonight is Eric Obeng, class of 07. Eric has been a superstar sales performer at LinkedIn and is currently manager of sales development at LinkedIn. We're so grateful to you, Eric, for sharing your expertise tonight. And our discussion moderator is Hannah Segal, member of the class of 2015. After graduating from Bates, Hannah started her career as an HR generalist at Farallon Capital Management and then transitioned to recruiting at Rothy's. And Hannah's remained in the field of recruitment ever since. Both Hannah and Eric are steady volunteers for Bates in many capacities. Thank you both for being here to share your time tonight. And with that, Hannah, the virtual floor is yours. Thanks, Stephanie. Um, hi, everyone. Like Stephanie said, my name is Hannah. I graduated Bates in 2015. Um, and me and Eric are really excited to be here to go through some tips about your LinkedIn profile. Um, an extra special thank you to everyone that signed on. I know it's an extra hour of Zoom and Zoom fatigue can be real, especially at this point in the pandemic. So we're so appreciative that you made the time to be here. Um, I hope everyone's doing well, uh, staying safe. Uh, in this pandemic, I think the job landscape has been so affected, whether it's been layoffs, furloughs, um, moving to remote, uh, there's been so many changes. And so um, I know that LinkedIn has been a steady resource for so many, um, even if they aren't looking actively and also doing some passive outward um, resourcing as well. So uh, I'm actually currently navigating my job search as well. So I'm in the depths of LinkedIn every day. Um, so I'm excited to hear from Eric about his tips and um, what he highlights from the LinkedIn perspective. Um, we also got some great questions from you guys from the RSVP. So we'll be incorporating that later in the discussion. And if you feel like you have any questions in the meantime, we want to make this as informal as possible, so make sure that you're just popping them into the chat window and Stephanie and I will be keeping an eye out on those questions. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it on to Eric, who's going to go through the basics with us and then we're going to be going through those questions. Over to you, Eric. Wonderful. Thank you, Hannah. And, and first step is making sure to unmute yourself, which I just did. So I think we're off to a great start. And, and really appreciate the, uh, the intro, Stephanie, as well, and, and seeing some familiar faces and new faces. Uh, as they both mentioned, my name is Eric Obank, class of 2007. Uh, I've been in tech sales uh, virtually since graduating Bates uh, way back when, and have had the uh, amazing uh, opportunity of working at LinkedIn for the last five years. And to Hannah's point, you know, with the, the, the turmoil that is uh, 2020, and, and, and all we thought it'd be a good opportunity for us to really take stock in, in what LinkedIn can have to offer for folks looking for jobs, uh, folks who are happy with their jobs and want to spruce up the LinkedIn profile and answer any questions that you, you all may have. Uh, and hopefully I can answer it in the lens of LinkedIn and share some tips. Uh, some of the ideas may be my own, but uh, here to help and, and hope that we can 
have a very interactive conversation. I see that many of you are not on uh, camera and hopefully you'll be able to see my screen when I'm sharing it. But what I'm gonna do before uh, we, we jump in is, is kind of give a back, backdrop in that. I'm gonna walk through a presentation that we do for many of our customers and prospects as it relates to uh, rocking your profile, right? And there's some key themes in that, that we see that are sort of just standard things that we wanna make sure that we capture when creating profiles. And so I'll walk through the, the slide deck. It, it could be a little bit slide heavy and I, and I don't personally like slides. So please feel free to chime in, ask any questions as we go through this because I wanna keep it as interactive as possible. And for you, those of you in the East Coast, I know it's about dinner time. So the last thing I wanna do is bore you uh, with slides. So let's uh, make this as interactive as possible. So what I'm gonna do is now share the screen. So if everyone can share my screen, which we got, I got some thumbs up. Basically what we're gonna walk through is, you know, some of the components that we look at, at at LinkedIn from the standpoint of building your professional brand, what your profile actually means uh, and, and different from a resume where we like to see this as a story, right? So if somebody goes on your profile, what are the things that they're gonna be able to capture from consuming the information that's there? Uh, and then because LinkedIn is a professional, so social media platform, there are air areas in which you can be uh, interactive, right? So joining the conversation, what does that look like in a way that's professional, different from Twitter, different from Facebook, different from Instagram, and then um, really capturing uh, all that there is there. So, you know, jumping in, building your professional brand, could everyone see the entire, entire, uh, it's can you a little all see me? The, it's, it's a little cut off on the left-hand side, but for the most part, you can see it. Got it. Yep. Okay, so let me, all right, cool. So what's a professional brand? Um, what's a professional brand, right? And so how we like to look at it is that it, it, it doesn't just embody, you know, what's on your profile. It's really about what is the makeup of who you are from your volunteer work, from your collegial work and your professional work and even just things that are of interest to you. And so many people think everything that has to be on their LinkedIn profile has to resonate with their job and what they're looking to aspire to. But we like to take it a step further and, and really have it be the profile of what really makes who you are, you. And from a recruiting perspective, we know that there are a lot of people that very much look at the whole picture of an individual while looking at LinkedIn. And from an individual perspective, people really use this opportunity to showcase who they are, what makes them unique, what they're interested in, um, so that when they do get in conversation with, with, with folks, um, they're really having the, the full view. So here are some things, and what I'm gonna try to do is, first of all, make sure that I can share this out. You know, I, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but it, it really is, a, is around, what are the components of professional brands, similar to what I just said, you know, from building your relationships, expanding your network, keeping tabs in your competition if it's a competitive perspective, becoming a subject matter, and we'll go through some of the ways in which people are using thought leadership uh, as a way to you know, kind of tell their story within LinkedIn, get promoted right, from a perspective of having people uh, put together um, recommendations. You know, it's always a good, a good place to be on LinkedIn because folks are gonna look at that first, right? And, the first components of this are, are really crucial. And if there are if they're things that are missing, uh, it, it very much will decrease the amount of exposure that you can get um, from a recruiting perspective, even just exposure perspective in LinkedIn. So we talk about your profile, your story. You know, the first thing is having a picture, right? So if nothing else, if you get, if you get nothing from what I say, be sure to put a picture up because it is very important. Um, many of us could, may have been managers at the time. Many of us have, have had to hire people. And when you don't see an image of an individual, you question you, it's just hard to you know, make that connection. So what we find is that when you have a profile picture, it really increases the, the way in which people can just really engage with you. And when I say add a photo, I don't mean add a photo that's similar to your uh, you know, Bumble account or your Facebook account or Instagram, it's a professional photo, right? So not a team shot, uh, not, you know, things. And, and, and we, we, we actually look at it um, in this context where you wanna really zoom in on the face, right? You wanna capture who you are. 
uh, you know, some people would be riding on roller coasters and things, but when we say from a standard perspective, you know, this is what we look at when it, when it, when it comes to taking a picture and, and having it be posted on LinkedIn. And then adding your industry, right? The, the whole point of, of LinkedIn is not just for uh, a, a place in which you can connect with individuals, but it's also a place in which individuals can connect with you. And so some of the ways in which they do that are through search engines and, and the search criteria. So if you are someone who's in computer science or computer software, you wanna make sure that a recruiter that's looking for someone in computer software can literally search from the industry perspective and find you, right? And so we always encourage folks, whatever field it is that you, you are in, whatever field in which you're looking to aspire to be in, you know, make sure you put that industry in there so that recruiters like Hannah can easily, uh, easily find you. And then the summary, I think this is probably one of the biggest things that I get questions on. Um, and it's not from the standpoint of, of how, how long or, or how short, but what do I put in there? And, and I can tell you across the board at LinkedIn, there are varying uh, stories that people put within their summary because some folks can be at a, at a level where it's like, you know what, I'm just gonna put who I am. I'm gonna put what I want and not care about that. Other folks really use this as a place in which they can start showcasing what they can do for the purpose of finding new roles. And so I took a screenshot of our uh, former CEO, Jeff Wiener. And in this, what you can, what you can see is, is a real picture into who he is, what he's done, and what he aspires to do. And so this is not an example to say every single about, about you or summary has to be this long, but it is that elevator pitch, right? So if you have that, that moment in which you're having a conversation with somebody, what is it that they're gonna say about you that you would want to be, uh, be presenting? And so that can look very, very differently. Uh, some people talk about their children, you know, the, the, the hobbies that they have. I have things that I've iterated over the last probably six years that has to do something with sales because that's my, that's my profession, but I definitely need to get back to it and, and, and audit it a little, a little bit. But we always encourage folks, if they have a story that they wanna tell, use this opportunity to tell that story. And of course, when we talk about your experiences. Um, Anna, if you don't mind, I, I took a snapshot. Yeah, yes, I did. Yes. I was about to be like, this person has my experience. <laughs> so, so I took a snapshot because I, I thought it was actually a good example of what it means to put your roles on LinkedIn, right? And, and so obviously we can see some of the three things that, that Hannah has done throughout her career, but she has some bullet points that sort of highlight what it is that she did that makes it relevant for anybody who's, who's willing to look, right? And this is not supposed to mirror your resume. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to give a snapshot or a headline into the things that you did. Uh, and in some cases, people put some of their accomplishments, awards that they may have, uh, may have received. I wouldn't say go to my LinkedIn page and use that as a, as a benchmark because there's things that I still need to fill in there. Um, but, you know, I work at LinkedIn, so it's, you know, it's whatever. Um, but, but I think it's a really good opportunity. The best profiles that I've seen are ones that have some information around what it is that they want to say, so long as you can say it, right? Some roles um, prevent you from putting in, um, putting in content and, you know, that's, that's fine. But, you know, we always like to see, you know, a couple of bullet points just to highlight what it is that you've done. Yeah, sorry, I just wanted to say one thing about this. When you're going through your work experience, what I like to do are my tip for people that are working is make sure you have like an accomplishments list of things that you're really proud of that you think would really resonate with people because as recruiters, we're looking for your accomplishments from not only, um, you know, like your uh, statistics, but also around things that you feel like um, describe that resonate with you. So having that as like a list, a bullet point list of things that you really are proud of is something that's great to kind of pull from for your LinkedIn profiles, because it doesn't have to necessarily resonate with your resume, like Eric said. Yeah. And, and thank you for, for breaking the, uh, the monotony of the slides. Uh, <laughs> I, I, wanna, I, I wanna definitely use this as an opportunity uh, to answer any questions, because the first three steps are, are probably the ones that I get asked about the most from a profile mm -hmm. picture, the summary, and then of course, putting in the information. So does anyone have any questions out there um, relevant to that or anything different that I can answer or try to answer? And if not, I can pull from the list of the 
RSVPs that has any relevance to those areas. Because I know a lot of people are talking about, you know, right now everyone's using kind of LinkedIn synonymous to resumes. So what are the differences between those two things? And for you, like, what do you think are the most um, notable things that people should be looking out for um, in terms of differences within a resume and a LinkedIn? Yeah, so uh, I know at LinkedIn, uh, there is actually a feature where you can download everything that's on your LinkedIn page as a mm -hmm. PDF and actually use it as your resume. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was actually just having this conversation with, with one of my reps an hour ago where I told them I have not updated my resume since 2015. And it's because most of the jobs that I have uh, interviewed for, I've just used LinkedIn as the, the story that I want to tell. And so when I think about resumes, resumes are, are very much more where you want to really go into detail into the things that you want to highlight of what it is that you've done. Um, and of course, based off of the industry or based on the role that you're interviewing for, that's going to vary. The LinkedIn profile is, is more of a sort of a headline with a little bit of sub bullet points that kind of just showcase a quick snapshot. If somebody had 30 seconds, what is it that they're going to see? Right. And Hannah, you could attest to this yeah. where when you're, when you're looking at resumes, you're often looking line by line mm -hmm. and really getting a full picture of this person's story. Some people don't have that much time to do that. So this LinkedIn yeah. profile is very much the headline. What's the 30 second elevator pitch that you want to uh, someone to walk away with when they see your profile? Yeah. And I think one of the other things that I would note is um, as recruiters, when you're on the recruiting, recruiting end of LinkedIn and you're looking for passive and also active talent, you want to make sure that they're lining up with the job, job description that we have. So what I like to do is like audit a lot of the job descriptions that I would have interest in, highlight kind of like the buzzwords or the repeat words that you say, and then kind of take those words and reinterpret them into your experience and incorporate them into your bullet points because that's how recruiters work. Like if there's a human on the other side of that, not all companies are like that, but if there's a human doing the recruitment like me or a sourcer, they're gonna be doing the Boolean searching and they're gonna be looking for keywords that have relevance to whatever job that they're looking for, whether it's operations, whether it's customer service, whether it's HR. So you have to do your due diligence to really look out and look out for those words and responsibility areas that we're looking for so that you're lining up to those job descriptions. So there is some homework to be done around that, I think. And like Eric said, it's just a brief snapshot because for the most part, we're we're spending, you know, five to 10 minutes to look through your LinkedIn profile to see kind of whether or not it's matching up with your resume. What are the things that are notable that you're highlighting in your LinkedIn that might not get in the resume um, and so on and so forth. So I think that's really important. And also just realizing that you don't have to put everything in anything on your LinkedIn. Like you can condense it, you can slice it and dice it the way that you want. You can put awards, you can put what your interest areas are because you really don't know what the recruiters are going to be resonating with and what they're going to be picking up uh, about you and your personal experience. Yeah. And, and, and Hannah, you made a great point in, in terms of the search piece. Mm -hmm. So everything within LinkedIn is searchable. And so not to get too far into the weeds, but you know, as the platform exists, when you have a recruiter, they have access to the database in which they can literally keyword search for positions that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. So if you're an engineer, and you are, you know, search on the job search, some of the things that you want to put in there is, you know, C++, some of the languages that you know, uh, some of your, um, your competency in, in Excel, things that are engineer specific that would stand out when somebody is doing a search for you. And so to Hannah's point, you know, it's very fluid, right? If you're on the job market and you're looking to do something different, if I, as a tech salesperson, wanted to go into law, I would definitely change my LinkedIn profile to highlight some of the things that would may, maybe cater to somebody within the law profession. So that's a great point. Yeah, and Eric, I have a couple of questions that are coming in the chat, so I'm gonna just um, yeah. head your way. But one of them is from Marianne is, should a student's summary be about what they're seeking or the experiences that they have had and how do we feel about the open to work tag that has come, come about within Corona and quarantine? I feel great about the open work. Too. I feel great about um, that. <laughs> you know, it, it is it is crucial, and and I, and I applaud LinkedIn for really leading the charge and making sure that people who are looking for work can find work in a more effective way. 
Um, we, we have put tremendous amount of resources into making sure that we have, or people have the ability when they come to LinkedIn to find jobs. And I think the looking for work tag should not be seen as waving the white flag, but more so an opportunity for people to really get their, get their exposure out there. Um, so we feel very good. I am all for it. If you're looking for a role, please, please, please do that because it's only gonna help your chances in, in getting in front of more people. Um, the second piece from a student perspective, I think they should add both. I think, you know, as a student and, and we've really doubled down in making sure that students are able to sort of build out their profiles in a way that's going to be palpable for people looking for uh, people looking to them for employment uh, opportunities. And so the things that you have done that you want to highlight, the things that you aspire to do, and the things that you're looking for are all important uh, aspects of, of really building out your LinkedIn uh, profile. And I think all three would, would be very, very um, good to, to have. Yeah. And just to add some perspective from a recruiting perspective on the open to work, it's a searchable thing. So for us, we're always looking for people that are willing to move, whether it's remote, whether it's full time. And also make sure you're putting in all of the different work titles that you'd be willing to work in. Um, just because you're in recruitment, you might not be looking for a recruitment role. Like for me, I'm kind of maybe making a move into other areas. So I went in there, I was like, you know, I could look, see myself as an account manager. I can see myself as a customer success person. So just make sure that you're tagging everything appropriately, whether you're open to remote work, whether you're not, um, just so that we're able, or, you know, recruiters like me are able to capture talent like you for their appropriate role. Wonderful. Yeah. Any more questions or should we um, I think we can continue on and then I'll just okay. sprinkle in any other questions if I yes. don't get any live ones. I'm sure Michelle perfect. will have a couple. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Okay. So um, this, this piece may, may be a, a bit uncomfortable for some as far as leveraging LinkedIn, not just as a place in which you can connect with folks, but also as a place to sort of raise your voice. Um, and so we, we strongly encourage people uh, to really talk about the things that resonate to them or that uh, um, are, are either relevant to their field, relevant to the time, and do it in a professional way. And so this is an example of a post that I did uh, a couple months ago, where um, obviously in these times, uh, as a uh, Black person in tech, uh, I, I captured a moment in which I was put, pulled over by the police. And it wasn't the first time, won't be the last time, but it was a time that I thought was important to really showcase uh, within my professional network, um, really shedding or shining the light on the fact that these things happen within the walls of whatever offices that we work in. And so I put this together and unbeknownst to me, it went viral. Um, and, and not only did it raise a lot more awareness of the fact that there's a lot of work that we need to do, uh, not only as a society, but also from a professional perspective. Uh, but it also just got me exposed to a lot of people, the folks that I connected with that I never would have thought I would have ever connected with. And you know, you can, you know, this is on my LinkedIn page, but it essentially got viewed by 300,000 people and it got over, over 5,000 likes, which for LinkedIn standard, that's a viral post. Um, <laughs> Um, but but it, it was one of those things where I was like, I felt strongly and passionately about telling this story and I did it. And it only has enhanced um, sort of it, my position at LinkedIn, but also just my, my foundation with, within who I want to be seen as, as a professional and also just a person. So if whatever field that you are in, if there are things in which, whether it's a publication or, um, a, an event like this that you're, you're highlighting, feel free to show that and showcase to your, to your audience because if you're doing it, you know, there might be other people who are interested in whatever it is that you have to say. Of course, you know, use some checks and balances. This is not like a, a, a conversation where you say, I hate doing the dishes. Um, you know, this isn't Facebook or Twitter, but if, if it's something specific to your career, specific to your passions, that you think can really move the needle um, in any which direction that you, you, are, you are looking to do, use this opportunity, right? And we, we have a lot of um, influencers that, that we peg, not like the influencers of regular social media, but people whose voices 
we want to uh, be expanded throughout the LinkedIn uh, ecosystem. And, and we, we constantly tell um, them to continue to share out content that people can, can ingest or digest. And so this is another example of, of really being able to show your true self and show the body of work that you have beyond just the positions that you've, um, that you've had. Yeah, awesome. And I think we have another question around um, just posting on LinkedIn. Um, Adam wants to ask, what's the difference between a post and an article? Yeah, so it's actually just, it's the format. And so when, uh, when you create an article, LinkedIn basically has a wrapper similar to, you know, creating a, uh, uh, you know, Microsoft, I mean, a, a Microsoft Word document. And you, you build that article within that framework, and then you can post it. Posting, like I did here, is just in that, in that window in which it's a free text form, and then I send it out. Both have its advantages, disadvantages. Uh, the advantage of an article is that you're able to have a lot more words. Uh, and when you're doing a regular post, I probably hit the limit, maybe like 2,000 words or something, or maybe not 2,000, but whatever characters it was, I definitely hit the limit with this post. And so depending on the content, uh, an article might be more applicable if it's a, a, a think piece or thought leadership piece that has many different layers that you want to get out to your LinkedIn audience, but requires more characters than a post like this where I did it within the window. Great, awesome. <clears throat> and I think this is also a really great place for us to just showcase who we are. So it's just another aspect of LinkedIn, which shows us that we're more than just, you know, our job experience and what we do for work. Um, a lot of my friends use them just for, um, pieces like what Eric said of like what happened to them that's notable or any sort of event or upcoming professional, you know, panel that they might be a part of that they want to spread the word about. So definitely an effective tool if you're looking to um, just showcase who you are, but also bring, you know, like-minded people together to um, get a sense of who you are. Um, and then, you know, the what else, right? So Similar to a resume, we have our volunteer experience. And, and I think now more than ever, a lot of folks want to, to see, at least within my field, within tech, they wanna see what other things that you do beyond just your performance, right? Um, similar to getting into Bates, there are a lot of applicants. They, they only admit a small percentage of people. And so when we were all interviewing, they wanted to know other things beyond just our SAT scores and the, and the grades that we have. The same thing is, is applied to the professional working place where as I interview folks, it's not just you know, their performance, it's also like, what other things do you do? And I think the volunteer experience is a great way to highlight some of those things and be able to speak to it in a way that resonates with, 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 with people. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't have this built out and you are volunteering, like you don't, be afraid to use this space to you know, kind of tailor your story a little bit more to go beyond just mm -hmm. the, the work that you do. Great. And some other questions are coming through. Um, one is from Michelle. She just said, would love to hear both of your POVs on whether recommendations are an important thing on your platform or not. Um, again, I had a conversation with a, with a, with a, a person on my team who was asking me to write a recommendation for them. And, you know, they're in the process of getting promoted, but I, I said, recommendations are better served after you're off, when you're off the team, when you're on to your, to your next position, because it's not necessarily something that everybody is, to, is going to go to. If you look at you know the folks that you're connected to on LinkedIn, oftentimes the, re the last recommendation that they have is probably several years ago, mm -hmm. and and so I think it, at one point it was a huge focus, a huge focal point, where when I first started at LinkedIn in 2014, that was big. Everyone was do talking about recommendations. Everyone wanted recommendations. We even had tabs in which people could you know just recommend you for various um, subject matter e experts, right? Mm -hmm. They could be like engineering and all this stuff. And we've actually tapered that down a little bit because we know that if folks want to get your story, they can get it, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not to say it's, it, it's, it's uh, not something that you should still seek out, but 
I feel within you know my network and the network of, of LinkedIn, it's definitely less and less seen as you know the end all be all to be able to see to see whether or not somebody is apt for the for, for the role or not. Yeah, and I think from my perspective, I think recommendations are important, but there are additional material to the already done reference checks, which are part of the process already. So what I like to do is ask for references. I follow up with the references, jot down all the information, but then I do do a double take on the recommendations and just read through just in case it is additional and relevant. Um, sometimes, most of the time it isn't because I don't think recommendations has been such a focal point for LinkedIn right now. And it's more about, um, just having those references in the back burner and then also just following up with conversations and getting to know the candidate themselves. So um, I wouldn't say that it's a huge uh, part of the recruitment process, but I, I don't think it hurts to have recommendations on your page either. Agreed, yeah. agreed. Great, and then we have another, a little bit more of a specific question, but do you wanna go through the thought leadership first? Go ahead with the question. Okay. Awesome. Kathy is uh, asking, I'm in a rapidly growing field, public health, health aging, age-friendly communities. I have a hard time finding the right terminology that will be recognized because it's never an option to choose from. How do I introduce the language that accurately describes my field? P.S. I get suggestions for working for fitness clubs. Got it. Um, so, so while LinkedIn is also a platform to to showcase you know, what it is that you do to get caught in those search engines. It's also a platform uh, with the individuals in which you want to um, kind of meet with. I think there might be a lag. Yeah, there's Can a little bit. Can you all bit. hear me? I think we're back, yep. Okay, sorry about that. Um, and, and, and so you probably didn't hear anything I just said. Um, but, you know, so LinkedIn, okay, great. And, and so I think from a fitness perspective, yes, there are a lot of things that you can put in there that could potentially uh, get caught from a recruiter when they're doing a search, but it's also an opportunity. What LinkedIn does is a two-way street. You can also be proactive in reaching out to individuals within that field, talking about what it is that you want to do. Um, and Han before this call, Hannah was just talking about what she's doing. And if you want to share that, yeah, so <laughs> I've been doing just so many messages to random founders that I think are really inspirational. I know it's not a tactic for everyone um, because everyone wants to go about the job search a different way, but I've just been contacting, uh, you know, I'm from, a, I'm from the director to consumer space. So I've just been looking in that realm, um, having conversations with people and just saying, hey, I don't see a talent role up on your site right now, but I really love your brand. This is why I resonate with it. This is my background. This is why I think I'd be a fit. And it's surprisingly been pretty effective. And I've had great conversations with folks about just their um, businesses, what they're looking for, what they're growing into. So having those candid conversations are also important. It always doesn't, it doesn't always have to be a formal interview. I think you learn even more from these informal settings. Um, and I, I was talking to Michelle the other day and she was saying that when she was younger, uh, her mom was saying, you know, if you don't ask for it, you don't get it. So I think that's a great little tidbit that I took away from having a chat with her that applies to the job search as well. Like if you don't go out there and um, kind of tell it how it is and why you'd be a fit, um, I think you're losing out on a lot of opportunities. So um, I say from the perspective of my job search, that's been really effective. And we kind of already uh, sort of went through this from a thought leadership perspective. Uh, but I think uh, another thing when you're leveraging LinkedIn and you're wanting to find out like what are the roles out there, you know, follow companies, right? Especially ones in which you, you think are uh, places that, that, that could be a great fit for you. Because what companies are doing just like individuals that they're, they're, they're disseminating information that is either to attract talent like yourselves or other people uh, and, and really tell more about who it is that they are. And so they spend a lot of money uh, leveraging LinkedIn to get exposure to, to the audience. And so feel free to continue to do that so that if there are places in which you're, you're seeking, you can leverage the information that you're consuming by what they're putting out during your interview process or during an outreach 
uh, that can be helpful. And Eric, just another question that's coming through from Julie. Um, is the number of contacts important um, that you have on your LinkedIn page? As someone that's setting up their LinkedIn page, the number will be small. Is there any way to hide that number on your profile? Uh, that's a great question. And I don't know the answer from, uh, can you hide it from your profile? Um, but I, I can get back to you. Uh, and the, the number of people is not relevant. Um, the, the only thing it, it enables you to do is get exposure to more people by having a lot of people uh, connected. But other, other than that, I, I don't look at somebody's profile and say, oh, they only have 400 connections. I'm not gonna take this interview. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really not relevant. Um, depending on what field you are in, if you're a marketer maybe, I mean, who knows, but I have never uh, come across a situation in which the number of people that you are following that's in your connection is gonna be an issue. Yeah, not from the recruiting perspective either. I don't think that's ever been a deterrent for us to pursue a candidate. So I don't think it's anything that you have to worry about. And we already sort of went through the, the status updates. It's all kind of intertwined. Um, but I guess the only takeaway here is that, you know, don't be afraid of, of using LinkedIn as a, a place to socially engage um, with people. While it is a, a professional network and there are professionals and it should be within the context of your professional brand as we're building that out, uh, it still is a place for people to consume and uh, engage with, with information. And so, you know, I would, I would encourage you if you have something to say, whether it's within your field, um, whether you're a spokesperson for your company or you're volunteering and you wanna get the, the message out there, uh, don't be afraid to use LinkedIn as well as other forms uh, to get that message out there. Yeah, and I think interestingly from my perspective, I think a lot of people are putting more of the focus on building out like their career pages on LinkedIn as a place for people to understand what it's like to work at relevant companies. So I've really liked going through the career pages, understanding what, what a day in the life looks like at one of these companies. They highlight employees and their perspectives. So um, I think it's even a little bit more informative than going to a glass door because those are much more like random comments. Whereas like when you go into a careers page, you're seeing not only like when it's founded, the inf information you would need for an interview, but also those perspectives are highlighted as well. Awesome. And then- So that's- uh... oh, Sorry, go ahead. I think we might be experiencing a lag again. I'm here. I'm back. You're back. Good. Awesome. Yes. Um, and then lastly, we have a question from Adam that says LinkedIn has grown, grown since its days as a job board. Could you comment on communities and how those are formed? Um, so, so, so I think the, the emergence of communities has been extremely um, popular over the last couple of years where we have a lot. Oh my goodness. Okay, great. All right, I didn't sing this time. Sorry, I'm I'm stopping my video uh, in in hopes that it doesn't um, it doesn't uh, mess up. But uh, when it comes to communities, we've we've definitely created space for those things to happen. Uh, you may see them as groups, uh, in which case it's something that's searchable, something that anyone can create, and and something that that we're seeing a lot of different pockets uh, really. Uh, starting to emerge. And so if you're part of associations, uh, if you're part of uh, think tanks, you know, that's where we see a lot of the com community engagement happening, um, where it's, it's going to continue to grow. Yeah, awesome. And I think one of the other things that we haven't covered, which I found really useful is that there's like a LinkedIn integration with Microsoft Word. And when I was editing my resume for the most recent job search, you're able to search all these other LinkedIn profiles of people that might have similar experiences to you, looking at the phrasing of what they're using in their LinkedIn profiles that you might want to carry over to your resume. So I found that that was great um, exploring other people in the field and people that shared the titles that I had. Um, and I don't think it's quite as known as I I, I, I didn't know that I didn't know that that was an integration so I thought it would be a good call out. Nice. Yeah. So any other questions in the queue? Let any questions? Yeah. 
if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat, but if not, I'll refer to the RSVPs and see what we haven't covered. Um, let's see. Oh, one of the questions that we got from the RSVPs is someone had a blend of consulting work and full-time work, um, but how would you best uh, kind of uh, represent that within the LinkedIn profile? Because I don't think you can categorize it right now. You, you can't categorize it, but um, you can still put it there, right? So depending on how long the consultancy um, was, uh, you could either do consulting headline and then all of the data below it can be the different consulting roles that you had. Yep. Or you can use each consulting role as a different position, as a different role. So from January to September, of the following year uh, or something else, uh, you could do either or. Yeah. And I would condense it as much as possible just because even with the see more function, uh, recruiters aren't gonna be going through like four see mores. So I think um, like Eric said, if you can con consolidate into like a consulting, um, maybe like consulting and then just putting, you know, at so and so company this year to this year or some other company from X year to X year. I think that's a lot more easier to read from our perspective as a recruiter and it looks better from a LinkedIn profile perspective. Awesome. And then let's see. Lots about condensing. Yes. Um, are you seeing any current trends that we haven't called out in terms of what people are incorporating like the open to work that we haven't called out like the badges? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would probably say the open to work is, is probably the, the biggest thing mm -hmm. uh, that we've seen. One thing that, that didn't capture, wasn't captured in the slides is that after you put in your name, there's often a, uh, or that, that often there is a place in which you can either put in the position that you, that you have, which most people do, but other folks kind of use that, that section as a tagline for themselves. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, I mean, mine's pretty boring at the moment, but it says Eric Obeng and then, you know, sales development manager. But if I can, once I actually get into my LinkedIn and start um, making it what I want, it could be, you know, a passionate learner mm -hmm. or, um, you know, effective leader, or like I have a friend of mine who is a VP of marketing at, um, at DoorDash, and he has son of his of his father, uh, son of his mother, father to his kids, husband to his wife, uh, and it's super cool. And I don't want to plagiarize that, but I might. But I, I've seen so many different things that you know. I it, it, it's always like warming to me mm -hmm. uh, when I look at people's profiles to to see something that's specific to them that that shows the human side of of what it is, who it is that they are. Because at the end of the day, that's that's who we are, right? We're, we're humans. And so I think the more you can showcase that, and there's a lot of opportunities to do so, the better. Awesome. And then Ted wrote in a question that said, I've heard that uploading one's video is gaining importance. Do you see that as an important and effective way to gain exposure within LinkedIn? Um, it, I, I'd love to better understand the context of the video. Yeah. Um, Ted, do you want to speak to the video portion or write in what you mean by just, is that a video about yourself or about, here, let me unmute you. Uh, let's see. Uh, wait, I think you're unmuted. So you can yeah, go ahead. Can you hear yeah. Me now? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So uh, this was, this came about because of a different group that was promoting this idea that if you place a, place a series of videos, maybe it's not just one video, you do it regularly. Um, you can gain exposure as, you know, whether it's a thought leader or whatever you want to call it. Um, and it seemed to me, it seemed to me uh, good advice, but I'm not necessarily the person who normally does that kind of thing. And I'm wondering if you've heard if there's some kind of a trend that this is taking place, that it does gain you exposure and um, perhaps people look at it a little bit differently. Great quick question. Ted, do you mind me asking what is your profession? I'm an art director, but mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the source that I got this from wasn't catering to people in my field per se. Just yeah. in general. Yeah, yeah. I'm an art yeah. director. I've been doing magazines, but I'm looking to do oh, other fun. things now too. Oh, wonderful. Well, first of all, thank you for your question and showing your video. Appreciate that. Um, 
you know, I would say, look, look, any chance you have to expose content within LinkedIn, you're going, you're going to get more exposure, right? And with multimedia versus text, something that's clickable where there's movement, you know, it, it, it's more, you're going to get more eyes on it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't necessarily say it's, you know, synonymous to LinkedIn. I think that's just the way in which people consume information. We have never really, you know, I have never spoken about that in terms of, oh, you should be doing this. When it comes to like companies and things that, you know, I'm selling to, I always try to err on the side of sit, pump out more videos, pump out more videos. And so, I mean, that, that same thing can be said for individuals who are looking to gain exposure too. Yeah, and I think from, I was I was recruiting some art directors at Rothy's and I think what was the most effective was you could have um, your reel, like people were, would link their reel into their profile um, as like a engaging um, kind of uh, taste into what they do and what projects they've been to. And then below have your portfolio link and just make sure that the password is if there is a password that it's in the in the in the section where you're able to view, or um, keep it at open source for people to just get a sense of who you are through your portfolio, because I think that's the 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 you know most uh, re everyone kind of creates these portfolios as a way to kind of display their work. So that's where I've seen the most. Um, what I've seen the most in art directors is just linking out their portfolios versus having it embedded in the LinkedIn profile. Good, well, I appreciate that, thank you. Yeah, awesome. um, yeah I mean, I guess another question I came off of the top of my head is talking about, you know, the benefits of like going premium during a job search or like what are the differences between that because I get that question all the time of like what am I really getting if I sign up for premium and is it really going to help me get to a better opportunity and you probably know a lot about that so I'm going to defer to you to question, answer that question. Wow uh, this is being recorded right Stephanie? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the inside uh, answer Eric. <laughs> look uh, Premium gives you more access yeah. to the LinkedIn platform. Yeah. So the more access you can have, obviously the better off you will be. However, you do not need premium to get to where you need to get be. the role that you're exactly. Yeah. But I get that all the time. Without premium, you can still DM people, you can still connect with folks. And that's really at the core of what LinkedIn is doing is trying to connect people. So I think um, if you're using it as just another form of your resume and just putting it as like a, as a, oh, I have to have a LinkedIn, you're not utilizing the core of it all, which is, you know, connecting with people that are not only in your industry, but people that are um, looking for you and employing you. So I think one of the biggest things that I say to everyone is, you don't need the pre you don't have to get the premium you can just connect and go from there and if you feel like you need more access to the platform then that's your decision but you still have all of these resources at your fingertips there's so many tutorials there's so many things that you can have within linkedin to make yourself um, closer to where you want to go as a future opportunity is what i'll say eric <laughs> thank you thank as you, you as you take off your camera <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. Any other questions? Because we want to make sure everyone feels great about their LinkedIn. I will say I have loved connecting with Bates folks. Um, I've connected with a bunch of people since my last talk um, as part of the professional series. So if you guys have any follow-up questions or any thoughts about this session or about LinkedIn or about my experience as a recruiter, feel free to reach out. I want to be a resource as a Bates community member. I know a lot of Batesies are like that. Um, we do have Bates Bridge, uh, which is a platform that Bates has created for exclusively Bates people. So if you're looking to do that, sign up there. Um, Stephanie just linked the super link there or what is uh, the URL link, <laughs> URL link there. So if you want to go and check it out, it's a really easy process, people connecting within Bates as well. So just wanted to put that out there for people that don't know about that as well. Eric, anything you want to add? Yeah, and 
Oh, sure. Yeah. Before my internet blows up here, yeah. um, you know, first of all, th thank you everybody for, for, for joining. Uh, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you have any further questions, be, be more than happy to answer and, and love this, this type of format. Stephanie, thank you for putting this together. And, uh, you know, hopefully this is helpful for you all. Thank you so much. That was a great conversation. Uh, Eric, Hannah, we really appreciate your time. And hopefully everyone got a few helpful tips. Um, I did put the, the link to the Bates version of LinkedIn, Bates Bridge in the chat. And also I will send a follow-up um, message to you all with a link to join that as well as a quick feedback survey. We'd love to hear your thoughts. But again, thank you all for coming. Thank you, Eric and Hannah. Uh, we appreciate you spending this time with Bates and wish you a great rest of your evening or afternoon. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye.